Almighty God, you are worthy, worthy to receive all of our praise and honor and glory and thanks. We praise you for who you are. We thank you, Father, that because of your Son, our Savior, the Lamb, Jesus Christ, we can come before you now, come before your word in confidence. Confidence that you will speak to us, that by your Spirit you will take your word and apply it to our hearts, to our lives, that we might bring glory to Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, please do take a seat. In the west of Scotland, the A83 runs for nearly 100 miles from the banks of Loch Lomond right down to the southern tip of the Kintyre Peninsula. The whole region is fabulously beautiful. But there's one particular stretch of road that has become particularly famous. Now, I've only been uh, on this road once, and that was in very low cloud with sleet lashing down. But when you see pictures of the place in bright sunshine with clear blue skies, you can understand how this spot became known as the rest and be thankful, or just the rest to locals. After climbing up through the mountains, the route turns at this point and begins to head down again towards the coast. And you can imagine the soldiers who first built this road back in the 1750s stopping at this, the highest point, stopping to catch their breath, turning to see this magnificent view and resting and being thankful. And as we emerge from our bruising encounter with a global pandemic, I don't know about you, but that's the feeling I'm longing for. That deep breath out. <sighs> feeling the, the warm sun on my face. Feeling the, the tension ease in my shoulders. Simply resting and being thankful. And over the last few weeks, we've seen how the Lord offers us true rest, how our great shepherd, Jesus Christ, bids us come and lie down beside quiet waters and know true refreshment for our souls. And we saw last week as we looked together at Psalm 95 that, that although we are graciously given glimpses of that peace and tranquility here in this life, ultimately the Sabbath rest that our Lord calls us to is still to come in the new creation. And in this uh, final sermon of this series today, we will see something of what that rest looks like. We will hear something of, of what that rest feels like. And so as we read again these verses from Revelation, I want you to imagine yourself standing on the rest and be thankful in warm sunshine, looking out onto a beautiful scene catching your breath after a, a long and wearisome climb. <sighs> and resting. And being thankful. Let's read again from Revelation 7, starting at verse 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count 
from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And the angels were standing round the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Well, we've joined in the, the middle of John's vision of the throne room of heaven, and we've arrived just in time to see the glorious future of all those who trust in Christ. And there are a lot of them. This, this future rest that our God has in store is not for an elite few. No, here are a, a great multitude that no one could count. This is the fulfillment of, of God's promise to his people. Right back to when he first called Abraham to follow him, Yahweh has spoken of gathering to himself a people, a people of his very own, more numerous than the stars in the sky, thousands upon thousands, millions upon millions. And here they are from every corner of the globe, brought together, gathered in, carried home. And I want us to see in these verses the rest that this great multitude has, the glorious freedom that they enjoy. Firstly, they are free from division. Every nation, tribe, people, and language has its representatives here before the throne of God above. They may rest in their unity, their unity with Jesus Christ and with each other. Danny Akin puts it in this massive throng of the redeemed in heaven. There is not the slightest hint of bigotry, ethnocentrism, prejudice, or racism. Friends, doesn't that sound restful? Doesn't that sound like cause for thanksgiving? And secondly, they are free from sin. They're dressed in white. No longer do their own failings, their own wrongdoings stain their very lives. They're washed clean, pure and righteous. And just look at the, the effects of that in verse 16. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Do you see? Not only are they free from their own sin, but they also enjoy rest from all the effects of sin. After the weather we've had this week, we probably don't feel this as much as the, the first century Christians in the Middle East did, but we get the idea in place of, of parched and arid ground, baking in the scorching noonday sun, in place of that comes shade, relief, refreshment, life-giving water. Friends, this is more than just a holiday. This is a profound change of circumstances. Here are the lush green pastures to which our shepherd has been leading us. He bids us come, rest. 
and be thankful. And that is just what John sees them doing in his vision. This multitude is in celebratory mood. The palm branches are out to welcome the king. The cry goes up, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. And then what comes next is, if you like, a great collective exhale. As all of creation joins with the redeemed in recognizing that they are home, that they may now truly rest. The entire created order is represented here in verse 11. The angels, the elders representing the the people of God through the ages, and the four living creatures, emblems of, of all that God has made on this earth together. With the multitude, they take one deep breath and then fall on their faces as they breathe out their praise. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. is what it feels like to rest and be thankful. And as believers, as those who have put their trust in the Lamb, that is what we have to look forward to. Rest from division. Rest from sin. Rest from its awful consequences in our lives. What a wonderful hope. What a glorious future. But of course, in the the mercy and kindness of God, it's not only our hope for the future. Here and now, in this age, on this earth, we can know something of the Sabbath rest of God. And we can know it primarily through his people, through the church. Greg Beale reminds us as we come to to John's vision in Revelation that one of the purposes of the church meeting on earth in its weekly gatherings is to be reminded of its heavenly existence and identity. You see, brothers and sisters, ultimately, we are heading for that gathering. That gathering around the throne. Our home is there with God and his people. But until we get there, we may know a foretaste of that wonderful rest here in this gathering. So what a joy it is to to bring this sermon to you on today, the day when we have been able to increase our capacity here in the auditorium to enable more of us to, to gather physically here. What a beautiful picture this is of that great gathering to come. As I stand here and and look out on a congregation that is made up of many nations, tribes, people, and languages. Gathered, having been forgiven our sins in Jesus Christ. Gathering around his throne to offer him praise and and thanksgiving. Oh, God, speed the day when we will be able to do it in song together. Friends, it is here in God's family, amongst brothers and sisters, that we may know his rest on this earth. It is here where he provides those who will care for us, who will love us and share our burdens. It is here where he will show all of creation his power to unite those who are wildly different to each other in the love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And so, friends, as we come out of this time of of trial and difficulty, let me encourage you 
If you are in Nottingham and if you are able, do come and join us physically here. Because it is as God's people gather from every corner of the globe, as they gather to proclaim his salvation, to sing his praises, to rest in his presence, it is as we do that that we point forwards to a time when we will truly be able to rest and be thankful. The rest that the Lord offers now in Jesus Christ is real and it is refreshing. But I think it is good for us to be reminded that it's not our full and final rest. Our moments of refreshment and relief in this life will never be complete. Let's read again from verse 13. One of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. You see, there is another side to the A83, that road in the west of Scotland. An altogether darker and more troubling side. It's thought that some of the soldiers involved in building it back in the 1750s died as they tried to, to forge a way through the mountains. And what's more, over the centuries since, the rest and be thankful has been astonishingly difficult to maintain. It had to be completely rebuilt a hundred years ago, and it is forever at risk of landslides. Since 2009, it's been closed no fewer than ten times, sometimes for months on end, as mud and, and rocks and earth have cascaded onto the carriageway. And if you add to that the, the nearby remains of fortifications built for training during the Second World War, along with the fatal crash of an RAF fighter into the nearby hill 12 years ago, then I think that this road actually has become a remarkably potent metaphor for our experience of human existence. We long for rest, to know peace and refreshment. And yet we find ourselves in a place where that is so hard to come by. We meet struggle and strife over and over again. We find ourselves at odds with the natural world, at odds with each other at odds even with ourselves. Life is full of landslides, literal and metaphorical. The times we spend drinking in the scenery and, and enjoying the view seem few and far between. And especially when we begin to think on a global scale, it's clear that, that humanity as a whole spends far more time training for war and dealing with death than we do resting and being thankful. Even here, in the family of God, we are not yet free from the effects of sin. There will be times when we get it wrong, when we're not as united as we should be, when we do not care for one another as we have been commanded, 
when we look more quickly to our own interests than the interests of others. Even here, our rest is threatened. Our rest is interrupted. But you know, the, the sobering truth of Revelation 7 is that that is exactly what we should expect from this life. I wonder, did you see it? Those in white robes, the ones with the, the palm branches, the ones singing and worshipping, the ones enjoying God's rest, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. The whole church age, the time between the, the first coming of Christ to his second, is characterized by that word, tribulation. We are told to expect struggle and suffering, difficulty and death. That's what this world brings. And the followers of Christ in particular are to expect that because they follow Christ. I wonder, did you notice that they are free from sin in the world to come? Why? Because they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb at the center of this gathering the one to whom all their worship is directed, is the lamb who was slain. The multitude know rest because he has bought their rest. Bought it with his own life, with his own blood. And that slain lamb now risen and victorious, Jesus Christ bids us come and follow. And that means we must be prepared to take up our own cross, to follow him through trial and tribulation. And so as we emerge from this pandemic, it is absolutely right that we seek the Lord for rest and refreshment. And in his mercy, in his kindness, he will grant us that, in part, in glimpses, in the months ahead. Not least in, in this gathered congregation. But ultimately, ultimately, the rest that he calls us to is not to be found in this life. Not to be found in the treasures of this world. For this life and this world are ravaged by the effects of our rebellion against God. Our sin. And so though we may pause for a while and enjoy the view. We will never be far in this life. From struggle and difficulty. Suffering and death. The rest that we know here will be but fleeting. But dear brothers and sisters, if we follow the Lamb into trial and tribulation, if we will follow him into suffering and death, then will we not also follow him into glory, into resurrection life, that is the rest that he promises. There is a day coming when we will no longer inhabit this earthly tent. Instead, all those who trust in the Lamb, in his sacrificial blood, that great multitude will be sheltered under the very presence of our Lord and our God. We will serve him day and night in his temple. And our lamb, who is our shepherd, will lead us to true and lasting rest beside springs of living water.
then. Then, forevermore, we may rest and be thankful. Let's pray. Oh, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the rest and refreshment that you give us in this life. Thank you that we can know even here and now in Jesus Christ, true rest. We thank you for, for the rest that you bring us in this gathering as we meet with brothers and sisters, as we enjoy their care and fellowship. But Lord, we also know what it is to live in a world where landslides are never far away, where our rest is interrupted and threatened. And so, Lord, we long for the day when we'll, we will gather with that great multitude around your throne and sing our praises to the Lamb, when we will know what it is to shelter under your very presence with us and to lie down beside streams of living water. Lord, we long for the day when we may truly rest and be thankful. In Jesus' name, amen.